and we are recording. Good evening, my name is Lisa Steele. I'm the Artistic Director at VTAPE, where we acknowledge that we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit River, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon uh, territory, which is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations, Métis and the Inuit peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Welcome to the Curatorial Incubator, V16, Living in Hope. Throughout the fall and early into uh, 2021, we will be hosting eight different programs that respond to this theme. Since we are fully online, we will post one title each week on Fridays. And at the conclusion of each uh, curator's program, we'll post a recorded Zoom conversation between the curator and the artists, which is what we're here for tonight. This evening, we're presenting a conversation between the artists Erica DeFreitas and Saskia Holmquist with me, uh, unfortunately, uh, Sanjit Dillon, the curator uh, for this evening, is unable to join us. She is unwell. And Johan uh, Himon Prez, uh, the third artist in the program, may join us later. So we will hope anyway. Thanks. Uh, now I will introduce you each. Um, Erica DeFreitas is a Scarborough, Ontario based artist whose practice includes the use of performance, photography, video, installation textiles, works on paper, and writing. Placing an emphasis on process, gesture, the body, the body, documentation, and paranormal phenomena, she works through attempts to understand concepts of loss, post-memory, inheritance, and objecthood. And Saskia Holmquist's work, questions of agency and professionalized language are explored through fractured narrative, employing performance, orality, film, and improvisation. Uh, the, um, she works with methods of communication borrowed from fields such as interpretation, psychology, journalism, and improvisational theater. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Erica, in your work, forgive me for speaking in my own tongue, four minutes and 12 seconds before entering melancholy, Sanjit writes, that your action speaks to a sense of meditative breathing. She says that focusing on each inhale and exhale, the act of breathing surpasses biological necessity to become an act of asserting presence. Can you speak to this? Sure. Um, at the time that I was creating this work, I had read an article by, um, that included Tim Whiten. And he was, so Tim Whiten is a Canadian artist, a sculptor, and he was talking about taking a trip to Japan and um, learning meditative breathing practices. And that really resonated with me at the time because I was thinking about moments of anxiety or tension where I have to remind myself to breathe. Um, you know, I find often that I'm, I'm holding my breath and not really realizing it. And so um, this video for me was a practice in being aware of my breathing um, but also being aware that there are moments where the breathing kind of um, pauses for longer than anticipated once my mind um, drifts away from that and enters that place of other thought. Mm. It's, um, it's a, a, a beautiful piece. It, what do you think at the, um, how do the viewers feel? Have you projected yourself into your viewers? I think there's, um, there's this really kind of interesting mirroring that can happen where um, when there's just one gesture or one action that you're focusing on, that the viewer can also take on that, that gesture. And I think, you know, uh, in watching the slow breathing, the viewers also kind of adopting that act, um, but then can also be very aware of when their breathing changes. Or when looking at my video, you can also see my facial expression also shifts. And even my body kind of sinks deeper into the chair once I stop focusing on that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, I found uh, there is a point. Uh, when, there is a point in that piece where I hold my breath, and then I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> I should breathe." <laughs> it's a beautiful piece. Uh, very, um, very simple, very direct. So, um, uh, it's uh, Sanjit's uh, title is "Slow Unfurling," and I think uh, each of these works fits into that um, her her notion. Uh, I think very well. Saskia, in considering your work, Blind Understanding, um, she, uh, 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 Sanjit uh, discusses Audre Lorde's seminal speech, The Transformation of Silence into Language and Action, where, um, where Lorde uh, urges the audience to consider their commitment to language and the power of language and asks, what are the words we do not yet have? Sanjit asks, uh, says, you pose a parallel question. How do we know what we think we know? Can you discuss this? Yeah, well, um, I think the film, I mean, for me, it started with uh, the economical kind of breakdown in 2008 mm -hmm. and the kind of tendencies that I saw um, in coming into language and kind of you know, the barrier between language ca culture and how forceful that kind of assimilate forced assimilation process was um introduced and um yeah so i guess and i think now i mean that film was done 10 years ago so looking back at it i can feel like some of the examples that i bring up in the film um, of the more recent character, they, they, when I hear people speak about them now, like introducing language tests, for example, um, from people, for people uh, coming to Europe, um, and how they now think that that is a normal act, which was then something that was quite new. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I guess these kind of stories that I pick up on, um, like go actually i have four stories in the film and uh they go from birds <laughs> assimilating to living in a city to these more kind of political um language assimilations mm. could you um just for uh, people who may be just tuning in now and they can go back and, and watch your work obviously uh and uh, uh or they will watch it. we will watch it after uh this conversation is, is completed uh, could you describe your work a little bit for people who haven't seen oh it? The, the actual film yes yes yeah so it's um i was uh, when i made the film i was thinking of it as that I was seeing very clear signs of uh, radical change into more radical extremist kind of um, right wing um, politics um, that was infiltrating into every area. But then in the film, I, I thought like how, you know, as an artist, can we speak about things that are happening, happening in the now? Um, without addressing them directly, but more maybe um, looking at them almost as from the future, um, uh, you know, contemplating a time, uh, looking back at something. So there, it's this very slow pace where we are, um, we, are we are sliding down a, a, a river. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so somehow the, the, the pace is very slow, but it's very, um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a slow pace, you know, because it's very um, aggressive, the yeah. stories, I mean, the, the forced assimilations that are taking place yeah. in the stories. Yeah. So there's this kind of countering of the, the balance between the, the line, the, yeah, the pace of the film and what is actually taking place in the stories. The stories of the birds are particularly um, memorable. Would you uh, speak to that a little bit? Well, it's a, it's, it's a story about blackbirds and how, you know, birds that um, within the industrialization, how birds 
moved out of the cities, most of the birds, because they couldn't, um, because of the noise levels going up, they couldn't um, find uh, the right tunes so that they could uh, pair. And, um, but blackbirds, for example, could keep up that tone and uh, they could kind of stay in the city um, and assimilate to the conditions that were there. Um, and so the story kind of develops their methods for, for coping with, you know, s smaller areas in the city and how they could kind of pitch up their singing and find new tunes to, to communicate. No, it's a, it's a wonderful story. Erica, do, would you uh, describe for people who may not have uh, uh, seen your work yet, and it's, it's online, we'll be able to, they will be able to look at it as soon as the conversation is finished and as soon as Saskia's piece is played. Uh, all three works in this, uh, uh, this particular program will be um, available. Uh, everything in the Curatorial Incubator will be available until mid-April 2021. So. Um, Erica, just uh, just describe your work a little bit. Sure, it's a, a really quite um, simple uh, video where I engage in the act of um, conscious breathing and really meditating on the act of breathing in each inhale and exhale. Uh, and the video or the performance ends as soon as my mind drifts away from being in that moment of breathing to allowing myself to be in the present moment of um, the now, which uh, feels and felt at that time quite heavy. Mm. No, it's, a, uh, it's, I think, in line with a, a number of your works that you've done, photographic performance and, uh, and video, uh, where you do a kind of um, anticipatory uh, grief, I think, uh, mm -hmm. we discuss it as that, where you um, are with your mother in particular. And I'm very moved by the work that you've done with your mother. I think it's really very brave. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, I'm always uh, in, in awe of it because you're, you uh, confront very directly what um, many of us don't want to confront, uh, you know, uh, which is loss and um, loss of a loved one, loss of our, our own past, because when our loved ones are, are pass away, they take us with them, because it's someone who, who, who knows us. Um, I wanted to ask both of you, um, what do you th what, how do you uh, see your works in relation to the theme, Living in Hope? Saskia? <laughs> um, well, um, I've actually made a, a, an, another version of this film. Yes, I'd heard. Uh, <laughs> uh, where I'm a little bit commenting on, it's called New Commentary. Mm. Um, so there's a new voiceover where I comment more on the structure of the coming together of the initial film. Mm. And I guess I'm addressing more like what artists can do. I mean, the, the ways of, of addressing difficult questions or difficult kind of political narratives that are taking place and um, by, you know, which language we use to, yeah, to be able to, to deal with these kind of difficult mm. topics. Mm -hmm. Erica? I think with this particular work, it's the idea that uh, I can make the choice. Not many of us can make the choice to take the next breath. Um, and so for me, it was the, the hope of, of being able to, to be empowered to make that choice, um, to be able to um, continue in whatever way I can. Mm -hmm. And that hopefully, you know, we all find those ways. Mm -hmm. It seemed um, when I saw the, the, these three works together, uh, I, I thought they really, um, there, there is a kind of, uh, of, of 
what is the background of hope? The background of hope is a kind of working toward it. So there's a kind of work that it takes place in all three of these pieces that I think is that uh, Sanji really um, was able to, uh, to, to kind of grasp with this notion of, she calls it the slow unfurling, um, uh, what it's, it's, not, it's not obviously hopeful, it's what happens before we're able to hope. So I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's quite a wonderful program. Um, I did, one tiny question. What I'm uh, the last, Warren Chan last um, last program asked this of his artists, and I thought, oh, what a great question! If I get a chance, I'll ask it. What do you think? What's what's it like to have your work only available online? Because of course, we would be in the the V tape viewing room and beautiful environment. We'd be you know having a drink. We'd be chatting. We'd be we'd be together, and we're not. We're very far apart. Can you talk about just having your work online and what that's like? I think for me, it becomes a different type of intimacy. Mm. There's also this kind of wonder of how far it might reach mm. to that one person somewhere where um, the access to being able to be in V-Tape in Toronto might not have been possible. Uh, so that is quite exciting, but it's also um, quite nerve-wracking when you haven't had this happen before, where your your work is available online and you're not sure how then it's being read, um, which is nerve-wracking, but also really quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Saskia, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a new experience. Um, and I agree with Erica that, I mean, there's the potential of reaching many, but... I also hear that people are already tired of all the kind of <laughs> um, watching things online. But I have to say that film particularly works well online. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think, well, you know, to be at home in a quiet, you know, where you can choose when to see things uh, works quite well. So for that thing, I think film is a quite good option. I've been part of other exhibitions which were not only film, which is more difficult. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we've had a great response to the curatorial incubator to all of our we we started right away in March, the first week we we went into lockdown. We started with um, something called Reflection or Fraction, I think, where we did, where the staff chose a, a work and wrote a little bit about it and we put it online and we've been doing that. Then we did Yanni Lee's program, um, Fractured, uh, uh, Fractured Horizon. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we've been doing this now since March and we're getting very, very good feedback. And I think it's because it's a single work and you know you can go that week and look at uh, something if you have a few minutes you can look at it you and um i think that's uh, uh we've as i say it um it's a way of of moving uh, our artists uh forward while we're all stuck <laughs> so um yeah, thank we have to you for your work and thanks to Sanji for her curatorial approach to this year's theme living in hope which i think we all must still please uh stay on the v-tape website the final title in Sanji's program Saskia Holmfist's blind understanding will be available and her and uh, Sanji's entire program will be available for uh, the next week uh, as a full program right on the website and then we'll continue we'll, it, we'll, it will be begin to be replaced by uh, by program number four uh, on Friday the 13th of November so um, thank you both and uh, be well stay safe and thanks to everyone for watching Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. Uh, Johan Hamon Prez hello. has been able to join us uh, this afternoon. Uh, hello, Johan. Hello. Uh, I will read a short uh, bio if, of you, if that's all right. Uh, Johan uh, Hamon Prez's work dances on the borders of practice and theory, art and cinema documentary and fiction, demanding a double take on the part of the viewers. 
Informed by an archaeology of present day media, his work seeks out the tension between the in intimate and the bigger picture of globalization. It questions our contemporary sublime, one framed by a fear industry that has infected political and social dialogue. By suggesting new narratives through which to tell a story, his work emphasizes a multiplicity of realities. Welcome to the Curatorial Incubator. Thank you. I have a, cu a couple of um, questions to pose to you. Um, in your work, uh, Raymond Tallis on Tickling, Sanjit uh, says that this work suggests that there are no individuals, as consciousness is fundamentally relational. Can you discuss Tallis's remarks that, quote, we are ourselves only through being in dialogue with others? We lost each other. Yes, we did. Should I pick up with that or answer the question in total again? Or what I, think, would you I think answer it in total again. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Raymond Talos, professor of medicine, whom we interviewed, uh, premise was that actually, uh, as a neurologist and having studied consciousness, as a cognitive scientist consciousness, he sort of uh, turned philosopher as well, came to the conclusion that maybe consciousness is not something trapped in your head, but something that is relational. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say individuals don't exist. I would say maybe individuals derive meaning from a relationship. So it's not that those, um, an, an individual as an entity is separate, but sort of is, is in vectors related to to a bigger context, but that does not mean that an individual would not exist. There, there is, and I, I think they derive meaning. Just as with language, Raymond Talas would uh, describe it as, as something similar to language, where we share a language, but we, we share that language in order to use those words to express ourselves. That doesn't mean that you cannot express yourselves. It doesn't mean that you're equal to that language, but you use the language so the other can understand you to express yourself. So there's a relationship, but that doesn't mean that the individual does not exist. So I would phrase it a little bit differently. And the question we started out with was, uh, why cannot we, can we not tickle ourselves? And the answer Raymond Talas gave us was that unless you're schizophrenic, and then you're actually maybe two or three people, and then you can laugh with your own tickling, but in essence, he was postulating that you cannot tickle yourself. You need the other to tickle yourself. And for him, that was sort of the, the uh, pointing out to the ontology of the other. You know, I know you exist because you tickle me. Mm -hmm. So it's that sense of reality that we share, but also that is relational. Something historical that moves in time, but that is sort of shared. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And um, it's interesting in times of COVID, of course, that... I, uh, to think about tickling, in a sense, to connect is maybe <laughs> so crucial, right? So yeah. yeah, we we are we aren't tickling anyone unless we we live with them. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. And that's also what the Zoom is about: is still trying to overcome yeah. sort of that gap of of you know, yeah. we're we're social animals, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even mm. and people complain about uh, Zoom, but I. We have a weekly meeting, a V tape meeting, and I, I just enjoy seeing everybody's face. You know, mm -hmm. we we haven't been in the office since um, yeah since March. So it's quite a while. Oh, since March. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, I like I it over there. Yeah. <laughs> when I was there last spring. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, Beautiful. It was sweet. I know. It was very nice. And a sweet dialogue as well. Yeah. yeah yes, yeah. it was very good. It was really nice. We're probably going to put it up on on uh, um, on our YouTube channel when we we got a little uh, broken off by the uh, all of this. But when we're back uh, when we're back up and running, uh, we will we have a YouTube channel that we will begin to populate. And that would be the dialogue we had last yes. spring. Ah, yeah. I would be curious. Do yes. we do keep informed about and I will for in. sure. I would say, I'll say for sure. I wanted to know, I, I asked uh, uh, Saskia and Erica also um, earlier today, how do you see your works in relation to the theme, Living in Hope? Oh, I think it's absolutely crucial. 
Um, um, we had a discussion when I, while I was teaching this spring uh, about, you know, hope is sort of a redundant word, but I, I would, with Rebecca Solnit, uh, Hope in the Dark, I would very much be with her, but actually hope, hope is sort of circumventing the optimist and the pessimist mm -hmm. in a sense that uh, it's such a crucial, it's such a crucial thing in these times that, um, or if I might retract, because last spring we had this whole dialogue about shadow world, which is, in a sense, you know, uh, Rebecca Solnit said, you know, hope will come from the shadows. <laughs> but uh, I think it's such a, an important thing to sort of, next to what, for example, shadow world is all about, is to not only like look at what's wrong with the world, but where do you take it from there? Yeah. And um, and in the discussions with the producer and the writer, uh, Andrew Feinstein and Jocelyn Barnes uh, for Shadow World, we thought it was so crucial to sort of also point at that, that, you know, um, well, let me retract, you know, Shadow World, of course, we're not talking about Raymond Talas on Tickling, but Raymond Talas precisely came out of that dialogue mm -hmm. from uh, that discussion from where do we take it from here and it was part of the diplomatic section if you know that actually in the in in when we talk foreign policy in the United States uh, the budget they have for for diplomatic diplomatic endeavors is as big as the money that is spent on one aircraft carrier and so if you compare it to the war machinery and they have 12 aircraft carrier if you look at the war machinery, it's so little that is actually pointing at the fact that open up a dialogue connecting to someone else. And so within the film of Shadow World, we had conceived during Montalas on Tickling as part of the diplomatic section as a way of opening up, uh, opening up uh, the tools we have to actually connect. Because if you invest all your money, all your subsidy, your, your biggest part of your taxes into war machinery, then if there's a crisis, you, you are likely to go grab the tool you know. And so I think that's sort of ludicrous. Um, there's another book by Rebecca Solnit, uh, Paradise Built in Hell, that actually in times of disaster, that actually, as she postulates, that we become actually each other's brother, brother's keeper or sister keeper. And that, for example, in 1907 earthquake disaster, immediately what you see coming about was kitchens in the sort of communal situations, a, a kitchen in the park, or the, the baker would give his bread for free. People would start connecting, unless actually from the point of view of the state where things were pushed from the top up down, where things go wrong. And she compares it also to, uh, to the disaster, uh, uh, Katrina, uh, disaster in New Orleans that actually people were really helping each other out and until sort of the government imposed the, the army and the army didn't know for example also in San Francisco the army started shooting on the baker because they didn't know the baker was actually getting bread out of his own store but to the army because they're not local villagers they thought he was stealing bread but he was actually just trying to get bread out to share it mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyway, this is an example from Rebecca Sonde that actually maybe mini utopias come about in the middle of disaster. Hence, she calls it paradise built in hell. Well, I want to thank you very much for your work. Oh, that, that's it? We're already... <laughs> we're... we're <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, uh, we, we try to keep it a little bit short. But if you okay. do you have anything else that you'd like to add, because I think it's, um, you know, this is... Uh, about this and if if you get a chance uh, look at all of the program um, okay. on, on, on Friday for sure because it uh, and see where where your work fits in it it's it's quite an interesting and kind of a nuanced um, uh, approach to this that um, they're not works uh, that um, they, they don't seem naturally to flow together but when you watch them together it's very interesting so you, okay. on the VTAPE website, you can, you can watch them uh, uh, in order, and uh, it's quite interesting. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Johan. Okay. And thank you very much for your work. And thanks to Sanji for her curatorial approach to this year's of theme, course. Living in Hope. And please stay on the VTAPE we website. The final title in Sanji's program, Saskia Holmquist's Blind Understanding, will be available. And Sanji's entire program will be available for the next week uh, until 7 p.m. on November 13th. But in fact, all of the curatorial incubator, as we roll out each of the eight programs, will in fact remain on the VTAPE website uh, until mid-April 2021. Okay. That will right. be when we we complete it. So do tell your students about it, all of you who are teaching, and thank you very much and good night. Thanks for tuning in. Wonderful. Me. Alrighty. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa, for still making it happen because okay. there was some Zoom trouble. <laughs> but we connected. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.